All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Connor Deshmaker. My pronouns are they, them, and I am the coalition manager here with Transit Forward Philadelphia. I'm here with my colleague, Yasha Zarenkalk, um, who will introduce himself uh, just in a moment. Um, today's program is structured as a Zoom webinar, uh, meaning that you cannot speak without our sort of explicit uh, permission. Uh, that will come during the designated question and answer portion when we'll call on you by name. Uh, during the uh, latter part uh, of our program. Um, as I mentioned a second ago, uh, so we can know who's joining us today, please uh, put your name, neighborhood, and any affiliations or organizations uh, in the chat. Um, I'm working on enabling that. Sorry uh, about that. Uh, there we go. All right, I just made those adjustments, so please include um, your name, uh, affiliation, and neighborhood in the chat should be able to work now. Um, the focus of today's webinar is going to be on the results of our rider-driven bus network survey uh, and SEPTA's proposed uh, draft bus network as part of the Bus Revolution Project. Um, today's program uh, does offer closed captioning for which you can adjust the settings uh, via the CC button in the bottom of your Zoom window. Just hover your mouse uh, over that section if the buttons aren't showing up. There you can uh, adjust font size, the presence or absence of closed captions, or view a full running transcript. Um, as noted before, um, we uh, are recording this program, and this will be uh, sent to all registrants uh, for viewing and distribution uh, by Monday, um, 1128 or thereabouts. Uh, this webinar will offer uh, three means of interaction, each available via your Zoom window. Uh, chat. Uh, if you have any technical questions, uh, you can address them to me, Connor, and I will happily uh, try and get that all figured out. Um, if you have any content-related questions, uh, please utilize the Q&A button. Uh, that'll be uh, found again in the bottom of your Zoom window. Just hover your mouse over. Uh, it'll just say literally Q and A. Um, when we get to that designated portion um, at the towards the end of our webinar, um, Yasha will uh, read your name aloud, and I will temporarily uh, allow you to speak so that you can ask a follow up, elaborate on your question, or anything else. Um, and then lastly. Um, as we go over the uh, bus revolution uh, project, um, we will be uh, utilizing this uh, shared Google Doc. Uh, there you'll be able to add questions that you might have for SEPTA about the bus revolution project, uh, and we will be compiling those uh, into a concerns, questions, and comments document um, that we'll uh, pass to them um, at our upcoming meetings. Yasha just uh, pasted that in the chat for you. Head to the next slide. Um, our uh, mission as Transit Forward Philadelphia is to amplify the uh, voices of riders and residents in support of transit as a preferred mode of transportation uh, in the greater Philadelphia region. Uh, we are a coalition of folks. Um, additionally, uh, our aim is to amplify the voices of riders who have been historically underrepresented and left out of conversations regarding transit equity, affordable housing, and access to economic opportunity. Um, this sort of calls out, you know, not viewing uh, economic development as the sole lens by which uh, major infrastructure and transit investments uh, are, um, you know, qualified. You can head to the next slide. Uh, here you can see uh, the diverse uh, some of the members of our uh, diverse coalition. We have over two dozen Greater Philadelphia organizations, uh, inclusive of neighborhood associations, environmental advocacy groups, small businesses, labor unions, community groups, and senior elderly and disability rights advocates, as well as a collective of riders interested in advocating for a safe, accessible, and sustainable transit network that allows people, communities, and businesses to thrive. Um, our most recent uh, wins uh, include the City Council's uh, transit resolution. Um, last Tuesday, we were proud to uh, testify in support of Council Member Helen Gim's transit resolution, formally cementing City Council's support of our priorities for transit equity and transit justice, 
Uh, that's in alignment with the Office of Transportation, Infrastructure and Sustainability's Philadelphia Transit Plan. Uh, by going on record, this offers Transit Forward Philly and our partners um, a benchmark on which to push the city of Philadelphia to partner with SEPTA to provide frequent, affordable, and accessible transit. Um, to learn a little bit more about our priorities as an organization, you can view our Better Access, Better Service, Better Buses platform, uh, which Yasha just uh, pasted into the chat for us. Um, and with that, I will pass it off to him uh, to head into a discussion of the bus revolution um, and um, an overview of our uh, rider-driven bus network survey. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much, Connor. Um, I just want to say thank you so much, everyone, to taking the time out of your day to um, join our lunchtime webinar. Um, uh, for some of you may know, my name is Yasha Zarenkelk. I am the Advocacy Director of Transit Forward Philly. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. And uh, I'm going to be going over today um, one kind of a, a brief little overview very, very quickly of the actual bus revolution project itself. I'm sure a lot of folks on this call already are very, very familiar with it. And then I'm going to go into some information about a survey that we conducted last year, um, thanks to the help of a lot of people on this call, which we really, really appreciate. And then um, going to going to talk a little bit about um, some of the trade-offs that we discussed in the survey, um, as well as some of the questions and the information that we um, presented. Uh, and then I'm going to talk to um, everyone a little bit about um, what our goals and kind of what sort of actions we want to see come out of the Bus Revolution Project um, and how they can sort of essentially be achieved. Um, so for folks who are pretty, I think a lot of folks on this call are, are pretty familiar with the Bus Revolution project, but if they're not already, um, the, sub, the SEPTA Bus Revolution is a three-year process, which essentially evaluates and redesigns the entire bus network uh, in order to essentially increase the speed, reliability, and the frequency of the buses. It's SEPTA's first ever comprehensive bus network redesign. Um, and it's between riders, community leaders, transit operators um, to essentially decide where current bus service should go. And that's kind of the simple kind of plain and sweet sort of um, easy way of, of describing a bus network redesign. And the key goal um, of the bus network redesign is to bring riders back to the network and create a faster, more frequent and more reliable bus network, uh, such as bus ridership even pre-pandemic had been in decline um, over from 2017 to 2021 by about 9%. And riders were just no longer seeing the buses as a reliable and dependable um, mode of transit. So it was critical that the transit agency redesign the buses for people's needs. And now with the, with you know, we're now living in a post-pandemic world, um, things have even changed even more. So the need for a bus network redesign has been more critical now than ever. <clears throat> Excuse me. So back in July, 2021, um, we decided to um, create a bus rider survey to kind of understand what riders tolerances, tolerance for changes to the bus network are, as well as their willingness to kind of accept um, or even dismiss potential trade-offs that are kind of inherent with a bus network redesign. Uh, and most importantly, we wanted to understand how bus service is working in riders' communities. Um, it was critical to us that we did our own, um, our own survey of riders separate from SEPTA. Uh, we at Transit Forward Philly are an independent advocacy coalition. While we work sometimes closely with SEPTA, uh, we also want to be able to present them with information of what riders are saying and not always have to rely or depend on um, the agency's data. Uh, we spoke to and surveyed, we surveyed um, about 2,456 total respondents. We spoke to over 500 people in person at various tabling and canvassing events. Um, and the two of the uh, 500 people we spoke to in person, about 250 of the people we spoke to took the survey in person with us. Um, we got some really good uh, data with our respondents in terms of it was a lot of bus riders, 
um, a lot of folks who ride the bus often. So about 35% um, of the folks who took our survey ride the bus almost every day, and that's about five to seven days uh, per week. Uh, and about 28% ride um, very often, about uh, two to four days um, essentially per week. So uh, we were happy to see that. 52% uh, of our respondents were male, 45% of our respondents were female, uh, and 3% were either non-binary or um, identified as uh, another gender. 39% um, of our respondents were African or Black, uh, African American or Black, 42% were white, 13% were Hispanic or Latinx, 8% Asian or Pacific Islander, 2% Native American, 1% Middle Eastern or North African, and 7% were two or more races. One of the big things that we wanted to ask riders were kind of what were their greatest concerns were when it came to riding the bus. <clears throat> so we asked riders to select their top concerns um, when riding the bus, including topics like safety, cost, uh, you know, how crowded the bus is, how safe and clean the bus is, um, the speed at which the buses actually move, most importantly, the frequency and the reliability of the buses, whether the bus is accessible via a wheelchair or if you're a family traveling with a stroller, um, how intuitive the bus network is when it comes to the schedules and the routes. Um, you'll see here in this graph that obviously these percentages don't add up to 100% because it was a select all that apply question. So we, we allowed riders to select as many options as they liked. But then we decided to uh, essentially rank riders top, we asked riders to rank their top three concerns. Um, and, we, and when they ranked their top three concerns, they were only shown the concerns that they selected um, in the previous question about what their top concerns were when it came to the bus network. We got a lot of really good feedback and the data kind of essentially displayed kind of what we originally thought. And that's that riders currently feel that the buses are slow, unreliable, and um, are not running as frequently as they should. Uh, about 55, about 59% of respondents said that the buses are unreliable and don't show up when they say they will. 55% said the buses are infrequent and don't arrive often enough. About 33% said the buses are dirty and unclean. And 32% um, of respondents said that the buses are slow and don't move fast enough. Uh, and then followed the, the, the following largest category two of respondents who ranked a top concern was then overcrowdedness and safety. About 31% of folks said that um, the buses are overcrowded and about 20% said the buses are unsafe. So once we reviewed all these categories, um, we decided to create a new variable or a new category called poor bus service. And that is when a rider selected either um, the buses are unreliable, infrequent, or move too slow as a top concern. And so we, and it was then, it was then, they were then marked, they was then created, a new variable was created called poor bus service. Um, once we created this variable, about 79% of riders said that poor bus service was their top concern, um, which was really, really, um, one, alarming to us, and two, I think, um, necessary for the bus revolution project to really make our bus system more efficient and provide the bus network that our riders deserve. Um, and this was uh, essentially kind of consistent among um, all of our um, racial and uh, ethnic groups um, who ranked poor bus service as a top concern. Uh, as you see here, like I said before, 79% of folks ranked poor bus service as a top concern, with 21% uh, saying it's not a, a bus a top concern. Uh, folks selecting either overcrowdedness or the cost of the buses or the cleanliness of the buses or a, a, a different sort of um, option or category. But yes, and again, you will see across all um, racial and ethnic groups, um, as well as household income and by neighborhood, 
um, there was an overwhelming majority who ranked poor bus service as a top concern. So the next thing we wanted to essentially understand was how often a rider um, makes a transfer uh, and how willing they would be to make one or more transfers um, with a new bus network. Um, while 30% of the people who took our survey said they do not make a transfer, about another third make at least one transfer with 10% of our respondents making two transfers and 3% making three, uh, three transfers. Um, the draft bus, bus network that SEPTA has put out will rely on more transfers in order to get riders to their destination faster and on time. And uh, in order to have a, uh, you know, a, a, a frequent and reliable bus network, um, you know, we wanna see uh, unlimited free transfers be implemented if SEPTA is going to create a bus network that will rely on more transfers. So <clears throat> we asked riders, um, you know, what their willingness to make multiple transfers would be if it meant getting to their destination, um, getting to their destination about 10 or 15 minutes faster. Uh, this was a trade-off that we asked riders um, because we wanted to understand, you know, are you happy with a one seat ride that you have right now um, with the speed and the frequency and the reliability that you have? Or would you be willing to make another transfer if that meant getting to your destination definitely on time faster or knowing that a bus will show up, um, you know, when it says it will and more frequently? So a majority of riders, about 56% of riders said yes, they are willing to make multiple transfers if it meant getting to their destination um, 10 or 15 minutes faster. About 44% of riders said no, they're not willing to make that transfer. Uh, one in three riders are willing to make one transfer. 19% of riders would make two transfers, and 3% would make uh, three transfers. So about 33% are willing to make um, one transfer if it meant getting to their destination faster on time, um, which is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty large. And I think important to note that not, there isn't an overwhelming majority of folks who are saying, I'm not willing to make a transfer. Um, and then 19% would make two, 3% would make three transfers. Um, but the most important component of this willingness to transfer um, is for folks who may either have not have the privilege or the uh, physical ability to uh, make a, uh, a transfer with the ease and convenience of other riders. Um, and that's specifically for folks who are uh, over the age of 55 or older, as well as folks with both invisible disabilities and physical disabilities as well. So what's interesting you'll see in this graph right here is that younger riders um, ages 18 to 24 were actually less, less willing to make one transfer compared to um, other age groups of folks that we surveyed. However, and this is very, very interesting to see, that about 63% of respondents between the ages of 45 and 54 were willing to make uh, one transfer in order to get to their destination uh, 10 or 15 minutes faster. In addition, 69% of respondents over the age of 65 were willing to make one transfer if it meant getting to their destination 10 or 15 minutes faster with 25% of them willing to make two transfers. This came as a big shock to us um, in seeing such a large proportion of um, older and elderly riders being willing to uh, make a transfer if it meant getting to their destination faster and on time. Um, of the riders between the ages of 55 and 64, Again, 54% were, were willing to make one transfer and 39% were willing to make two transfers. Um, so this kind of showed us that there was a, um, a decent amount of riders who were willing to make transfers 
as well as um, you know, folks across all age groups. Um, in addition, when we looked at it, when we broke it down by race and by neighborhood, the majority of all races were willing to make at least one extra transfer if it meant getting to their destination 10 or 15 minutes faster. And then um, when we broke it down by neighborhood, we saw that riders from the Northeast uh, were least likely to be willing to make one transfer. And we kind of induced, we uh, kind of induced that that's perhaps because they are traveling the longest distances. Um, likewise, likewise um, our data also showed that suburban riders were least likely to be willing to make one transfer. But across all neighborhoods, the overwhelming majority uh, was willing to make one transfer to get to their destination uh, 10 or 15 minutes faster. The next sort of trade-off that we um, wanted to ask riders was if a rider was willing to walk further to a bus stop uh, to get to their destination 10 or 15 minutes faster. Uh, these were two big kind of trade-offs that um, we knew would be coming with a bus network redesign and with the bus revolution project. Um, we saw that there was an overwhelming majority of riders, about 67% of riders that we surveyed overall said that, yes, they would be willing to walk further to a bus stop if it meant getting to their destination uh, 10 or 15 minutes faster, with 33% saying no, they would not be willing to um, walk further to a bus stop in order to get to their destination faster. And this was true among pretty much across all age groups. Um, and the, here is where we see the data reflecting what we originally thought with riders um, over the age of 65, less likely uh, than younger riders to walk further. Um, but 57% 57 of respondents between the ages 55 and 64 and 51% um, who are ages 65 and up um, are willing to walk further to a bus stop. Um, and of the riders between the ages of 55 and 54, 29% were willing to walk an extra one to two blocks. 45% were willing to walk an extra two to three blocks. And 25% were willing to walk an extra four or more blocks, um, which was really interesting to see so when we broke down by age groups, the overwhelming majority of riders uh, across the age groups are willing to walk at least two to three extra blocks in order to get to their, in order to get to their destination 10 or 15 minutes faster. Um, and we made sure when um, talking to folks in person and um, one with the, we spoke, we spoke to about 500 people when we did the, um, our tabling and canvassing events. And we always oh, surveyed about 250 people in person. Uh, and when we spoke to people about these trade-off questions, asking them about whether or not they'd be willing to walk further, you know, we kind of made it really simple and clear. Like, look, if you walked two to three extra blocks from your current bus stop right now, uh, but it meant getting to your destination 10 or 15 minutes faster, would you be willing to make that trade-off? Uh, and that's essentially how we got the results that we see. So um, those were kind of some really interesting and big uh, takeaways uh, and the key points. So from that information, we then kind of essentially identified, okay, what are the, what are our goals for our better access, better service and better buses campaign, um, which we dropped earlier in the chat and, and Connor will also share as well. Um, one of the big things that we want to see out of the bus network redesign is a uh, frequent bus service with buses that arrive every 10 or 15 minutes or better. Right now, only 20% of SEPTA's bus routes provide frequent all day service. And unfortunately, sometimes <clears throat> schedules are kind of outdated and designed for a pre pandemic kind of nine to five commuting style. And as we mentioned earlier, 55% of riders said that buses don't run frequently enough or come as often as they like. And we wanna see a bus network where a rider can just show up to a bus stop and know that a bus will show up within at least 10 or 15 minutes or better 
um, with a majority of the frequent routes. Um, and that, you know, we don't want to see riders having to wait too long for the bus and being even unsure if and when the uh, buses will even arrive. So SEPTA must design a faster, more frequent bus network with 50% of bus routes operating service every 10, 10 minutes or 15 minutes or better all day from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day. Uh, the bus revolution project should essentially create a network where riders simply show up to a bus stop and know confidently that a bus will arrive in 10 or 15 minutes and no later than 30 minutes. The next big thing that we want to see out of the bus network is a faster network with reliable buses that essentially arrive on time. About half of SEPTA's highest bus ridership routes operate at speeds less than 10 miles per hour. And all of SEPTA's highest ridership routes average about only 11 miles per hour. Um, buses have been moving slower and slower each year and continue to get stuck in traffic, which have caused delayed wait times and longer trip times for riders. On top of that, riders are left waiting at stops, unsure of whether or not their bus will arrive. And only a quarter of SEPTA's bus routes reach the agency's 80% on-time performance target. Uh, and of the 2,000, roughly 2,500 riders we spoke to, as I mentioned before, 58% of respondents said that the buses are unreliable and don't arrive when they say they will. So riders deserve a rapid and reliable bus network that gets them to their destination on time and in a safe and dignified manner. So we want to see the bus revolution increase the average speed of SEPTA's highest ridership routes to at least 14 miles per hour on average and see at least half of SEPTA's highest ridership routes reach SEPTA's on-time performance standard. Uh, we believe that this is um, you know, essential to what the outcome and the goals of the Bus Revolution Project um, are aiming to achieve. Lastly, we wanna see an affordable and easy to understand bus network with connections to high quality transit and job opportunities. Right now, the directions that some buses move um, and what time they arrive and depart is not always intuitive or easy to understand for riders, especially for first time riders and non English speaking riders. Uh, and this is because routes are sometimes indirect, sometimes even duplicative. Uh, bus schedules are kind of inconsistent and service patterns vary uh, by time and day. Some routes meander in several directions. They run on different streets depending on the time of day or run too close or parallel to one another, often causing delays long wait times, and competition for services. We know that the draft bus network will rely on transfers in order to get riders to, to their destination faster and on time. And if riders are asked to transfer for, from multiple buses and then to the L or the Broad Street line, then SEPTA's new fare policy must allow for uh, unlimited free transfers within a two hour time win window. The bus revolution must provide an easy to understand and transfer accessible bus network with consistent bus schedules, free transfers, and intuitive timetables so that riders can easily protect, predict their travel and access the opportunities our region really has to offer. So how can SEPTA essentially achieve some of these goals that we've laid out? Well, there's a variety of different ways. And I think that from what we've seen in the draft network, SEPTA is on path to, to achieving but there are a few places for improvement. And this is where we want to hear from writers like you, um, where you feel like the, the, the draft network is missing the mark. And that is where in the document that um, Connor shared earlier in the chat, and he'll drop again in the chat um, as well, if you want to provide specific feedback on routes or in your neighborhood where you feel like um, the draft network is not hitting the mark for you, uh, or if you have questions or comments or direct feedback that you want to share with SEPTA, um, please feel free to put that in the document uh, and we will make sure to forward that along to the right folks and also follow up with you as well. Uh, we have, we should, we will have your contact information already, but please re remember to put your contact information um, in the document as well. So when we wanna see a frequent bus service, uh, a frequent bus network with buses arriving every 10 or 15 minutes or better. Um, one way that SEPTA can kind of achieve that 
is by combining select routes as well as shifting peak period service to weekends and off peaks. Uh, SEPTA can provide more frequent bus service for riders and workers who rely on SEPTA to get to school, work, childcare, and other essential activities. Um, another way, and I'm, and I'm noticing this in the chat as well, another way that SEPTA can create a faster network with reliable buses that arrive on time is that if SEPTA and the city of Philadelphia work together to upgrade certain routes to bus rapid transit or rapid bus lines and implement transit priority improvements like bus only lanes, queue jumps, um, or signal priority in order to increase the average speed of buses and help SEPTA reach its own on-time performance goals. And if you're kind of interested in learning more about what some of these transit priority improvements um, are and kind of look like, the Philadelphia Otis Transit Plan, um, which Connor will also link in the chat as well, has uh, kind of an outline of what these uh, transit prior bus priority improvements are and how they can be applied on Philadelphia uh, streets. And then lastly, we want to see obviously an, an affordable and easy to understand bus network with connections to high quality transit and job opportunities. So if, if we want to achieve this, we want to see the bus revolution adjust some routes to be straighter and easier to understand um, and split certain routes into separate routes in order to reduce bus delays and adjust redundant service that overlaps parallel or duplicative routes. Uh, we also want to see the uh, fare structure to allow unlimited free transfers within a two, two hour time window uh, between SEPTA services. Um, and with that, I'm gonna pass the mic over to Connor, who's gonna talk about how riders can kind of get involved. And we're also gonna talk um, a little, try and answer a few of the questions that we have in the Q and A. Great, thanks everybody so much. Um, so best ways uh, for you all to get involved. This is uh, really the exact right time to be tapping into this bus revolution um, process. Um, Josh, if you could uh, slip to the next slide. Awesome. So um, you can view the um, bus revolution uh, draft network um, as well as uh, the upcoming uh, engagement opportunities uh, right here. I just pasted in the chat for everyone on the SEPTA bus revolution website. Um, again, there you can view um, a variety of formats of maps. Um, there's one that involves uh, basically like a sliding map that'll show you how the routes are changing. So you can see where your route um, overlaps with what's to come. Um, as well as just uh, some proposals that are, go over some of those high level points like we talked about uh, involving transfers, um, uh, little bits of shifts of duplicative routes, those kinds of things. Um, if you, uh, the engagement opportunities that SEPTA is currently offering um, include a mix of open houses and community conversations. Um, the open houses uh, are all in-person events uh, by neighborhood. Um, those are going to be running through mid-December. Um, they can be, uh, the full schedule can be found at the link that I most recently put in the uh, chat box and that Yasha is sharing on the screen right now. Um, those open houses, uh, some ones coming up in the next week or so, uh, include Lower Marion on November 29th, North Philly on November 30th, uh, and Greater Olney on December 1st. Uh, there is no registration needed for those, um, but you can find all the details at septabusrevolution.com slash get dash involved. Um, and then for virtual ones, those are those community conversations. Uh, some upcoming opportunities include uh, November 28th in West Philly and uh, November 29th in Great Valley, uh, those virtual ones, the geographic focus is just uh, to sort of help folks know which areas um, of the bus revolution uh, will be most heavily discussed. Um, for those virtual ones, they do request a registration, but that's just to get you uh, the individualized link uh, to join that um, public meeting. 
Um, so as, as noted, you know, best ways to get involved are attending open houses and community conversations. Uh, additionally, uh, there are some feedback forms uh, that are on that SEPTA bus revolution website. And we, Yasha um, and I, uh, act at, can be your liaison as well. We have, uh, as noted before, a large coalition um, that we um, you know, help facilitate um, and a great way uh, to set up perhaps a one-on-one -on -one meeting uh, with SEPTA. Um, you can shoot me an email um, and I am happy to uh, coordinate with you. I am putting my email in the chat and it is also on the screen. Um, I know we have pasted quite a lot of links and information in the chat. Um, when we send out the recording for this webinar next week, I'll be sure to also include all of these links for easy access. Um, so we um, uh, would encourage you that uh, there's a lot of folks who are putting things in the chat. Um, I would encourage you to uh, please email us um, and then also uh, on that SEPTABusRevolution.com website, that is going to have uh, the uh, most uh, complete set of um, programs um, that are uh, upcoming. I just, uh, when I was enumerating them verbally, it just is a, a couple of upcoming ones um, as examples, uh, but we're happy to help ensure that your community's voice uh, gets heard. Um, they have uh, been in progress for about a month and there um, is about a month to go. Um, further um, public engagement will be coming in January before the hearings begin um, between Q1 and Q2 of 2023. Um, and then lastly, um, if you have specific questions for SEPTA, uh, again, uh, we do have uh, this document here that I'm going to repaste in the chat. Uh, that is uh, something that we can help uh, compile uh, for you. Please include your contact information there as well, and we'll happily uh, be uh, helping to coordinate um, any questions that you're seeing um, about your routes um, and your destinations in the current SEPTA bus revolution draft network. Uh, with that, I will uh, pass it to Yasha to go over some of the uh, things that have entered the Q and A. Um, again, for the schedules, um, we are uh, the best option is going to be through the SEPTA Bus Revolution website. Um, I am going to copy and paste that link one more time into the chat for folks. Um, there are uh, quite a few uh, events, both in person and virtual, coming up. Um, and uh, that's going to be the, uh, your best resource. Um, just right there in the chat, um, but happily uh, we can coordinate via email as well um, if that is useful. Thank you so much, Connor. And um, Rebecca, I see your comment in the chat about repeating the schedule for testimony. And if I am understanding correctly, I believe you're referring to the um, hearings that they will have around the um, bus revolution passing. Um, is that correct? Yes, that's that's correct. Thank you. Um, so from what we have heard thus far from SEPTA in um, our check-in with them, it looks like um, in between January and April, they're going to get the network um, to a place where both SEPTA and the community is essentially um, generally on board and kind of like. And then um, from April through about May to June, and I think some of these dates are flexible too, um, they're going to host uh, more open houses and hearings um, on the actual changes to the bus network. The first hour will be like a more open house, with the second hour being um, a more formal hearing. And if you're familiar with how SEPTA does their hearings, um, their, you know, it, it's, it's a process that the agency has created uh, essentially for um, to get changes that in, in order for a change to occur or to happen, it has to go through a formal hearing um, with a uh, an actual like speaker and a, a formal process. It, from what we've heard, there's going to be about 15 hearings 
um, about two uh, per day. There'll be about six to seven uh, hearings in the city and about six to seven in the suburbs. Um, and they will, they're trying to find locations yeah, that will have a possible virtual option as well. And all the material uh, yeah. will be online. Um, and, and so the examiner hearings are essentially sl uh, slated for summer of 2023. No locations have been identified. Um, this is all just kind of, you know, some, some short and kind of insider information that they've shared with us. I hope that answered all your questions, Rebecca. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, the next question I see uh, in the Q&A is from Jarrett Johnson. Hey, Jarrett, shout out to you, Fifth Square. Um, it's, the question is, has there been any discussions about with SEPTA about making the regional rail more convenient and frequent uh, to commuters? Uh, yes. Right now, though, the focus of um, our Better Buses campaign is strictly with the um, bus network and the bus revolution and the bus network redesign project. Um, but our coalition partners, Fifth Square, which you are uh, very well aware of and informed with, um, are kind of taking the lead on the reimagining regional rural project. And I'll have um, Connor drop in the chat um, a link to the reimagining regional pro regional rail project um, if folks have uh, want to know more information about that. But I think as the regional rail network um, relates to the bus revolution, you know, one key goal of our project is, is uh, of, of our campaign is to see SEPTA increase uh, connections to both SEPTA's Broad Street line, uh, the Market Frankfurt line, as well as the regional rail system. So um, that is something we will be pushing because we would like to see regional rail too as, as well, become more of a lifestyle network um, that is part of SEPTA's high-speed rail service as well as their bus network. Um, and then I have a, a question from Robert Bernstein. It says, what upgrades are necessary for rapid buses? Um, Robert, this is a great question that if I worked at SEPTA or the city, uh, I would wish I could give you a full uh, answer to, um, but from what I know and from what I've gleaned from the Otis Transit Plan um, is where they're thinking of potentially um, kind of creating some rapid buses um, and sort of in terms of the infrastructure that needs to uh, go in, into place to make that happen. Um, you know, it, there can be actual designated right-of-ways along Roosevelt Boulevard um, for a rapid bus line. Um, and that's something that the city would have to actually change the and allocate uh, space for um, public transit to happen in um, along Roosevelt, Roosevelt Boulevard, like in the center lane, creating some sort of um, rapid bus um, throughway for buses only. Um, that's kind of as much as I know, but Robert, if you, um, in the Google document that Connor and I shared, um, wanna write down kind of what you wanna know in terms of what sort of upgrades are necessary for rapid buses, um, I will provide and share that with the right folks over at the city of Philadelphia, as well as with SEPTA, we can get back to you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, and then I see there's a question from Sandy. Is there any interest in pushing the agency to seek additional funding to make the bus revolution as complete as the regional rail plan, e.g. restore service to areas like East Oak Lane and Packer Park that will have none under the draft plan? Sandy, this is a great question. And this is something that we've been discussing with our coalition members for quite a while now. Um, Cities across the United States have done revenue neutral bus network redesigns in the past, but also we have seen other agencies do um, invest a lot of money in um, their uh, redesign of the bus network. Um, SEPTA has promised us that there will be no loss of service uh, when it comes to the bus revolution project. Um, and we have been trying to one thing that we're thinking of doing um, in the next coming months 
um, in the following year is having writers show up to SEPTA board meetings to one, not only encourage writers or encourage the SEPTA board to um, understand the importance of the bus revolution project and to be more involved in the project, but two, potentially authorizing um, funding uh, for where we where service is um, needed to be restored. I think right now what we're doing is trying to understand where we feel like writers feel like service needs to be restored, um, where it's most important that service be restored, um, and then trying to go to SEPTA and, and make specific asks around um, where service needs to be restored and where service needs to be restored and not at the cost of losing service elsewhere. Thank you, that was a very good answer. Thank you, Sandy. Um, and then I see there's some discussions in the chat around um, the Northwest um, community conversation that is happening tonight at 6.30. Uh, Don, if you are able to share the um, Zoom link registration in the chat, um, if so that folks on this call could would be interested in attending, that would be super helpful. Uh, and then we can what well, we can also do too, because I didn't see it on the SEPTA bus revolution website, but I, I think I did see the emails going around um, between you and Marissa about it. So what we can do is we can also share it out with our list as well. But thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, are there, oh, I see it says the Northwest is tonight virtual. I did, but the link is not active. Okay, what we'll do is we'll, we'll follow up and try and get a copy of the link um, and send it out to folks. Yes, you do have to register, absolutely. If you, want to, if you want to share the registration link in the chat, that would be helpful. So Sandy, this is also a great question. So this is what essentially, essentially what ended up happening was SEPTA hosted a community conversation in the Northwest on the 17th. The, the Zoom was set up as a general meeting. So they had a max capacity of 100 people. And there were a lot of people who were trying to get into the call who were unable to. So what they did was they are, they, they are hosting an additional meeting now as a webinar so that as many folks as possible can attend. Um, so the meeting did happen. And they're hosting, it wasn't necessarily rescheduled, and they are hosting another meeting um, tonight. I don't see any other questions in the Q&A. Um, so with all of that said, um, I want to thank everyone so much for taking the time to chat with us and being with us here today. Please remember if you have any specific comments or questions or feedback that you want to see, um, you know, SEPTA answer or to have forwarded to folks over at SEPTA or the city to fill out um, and, and put the information in the Google Doc that we shared. Uh, if you have any follow up questions, you can contact Connor. Uh, his email is their, I'm sorry, their email is Connor at transitforwardphilly.org. Um, and we wanted to say thank you so much for everyone for being here today. And uh, we look forward to working with y'all um, in the future. Yeah, thank y'all so much. Um, and as noted, um, again, we know there are a lot of links in the chat. Uh, we will also compile them in a follow-up message uh, that will go out to everyone who registered. Um, uh, depending on the timelines of some of these needs, uh, some of the information will be coming out today. And then some of the information, including a recording of this webinar, will come to you next week. Thank you so much, everyone. And we appreciate everyone's feedback in the chat as well. Connor and I will be going through the chat uh, and uh, taking that feedback as well and, 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 and really sharing it with, with the folks at the Bus Revolution Project. So enjoy the rest of your day. Try and stay warm. It is very, very cold out. Um, but thank you again, everyone, for your time. Um, and we will see you all later. Everyone.